So the drama is far, far from over within, within the PF. On Mao Sampa's side, they are claiming that there is no faction within the patriotic front. They are the right uh, leaders of the patriotic front. And on President Isio's side, they are also claiming that there is no faction within the patriotic front. They are the legitimate leaders of the patriotic front. I've got two questions to ask you uh, before we move on to another subject. And I'll start with this question. And it's in relation to Mr. Sampa and the influence that he has over the Patriotic Front. Based on all these developments, the change of leadership at Parliament, the expulsion of these members, and all the issues relating to the Registrar of Societies, how much influence do you think Mr. Sampa has over the Patriotic Front and its leadership? Mr. Sampa has no influence over the party. He has zero influence over the party. What Mr. Sampa has is the backing of the executive. That, that is all he has. But then it's not the executive that chooses the leadership of the party. It is not the executive that controls the internal democracies of any particular party. The very Mao Sampa who abrogated the constitution in calling for a convention purports to want to follow the constitution in trying to expel members of the party who does that so the very constitution that you abrogate is the very one that you want to rely on that that that, that certainly can stand so until and unless there's a a, a a declaration from the court determining the validity or invalidity of the purported retreat that was converted into an extraordinary conference then all matters remain as they are until we have the final judgment of the court Mr. Zulu, I've heard this so many times. The allegation that what's going on in the patriotic front is being sponsored by the executive, that it's being sponsored by the ruling party. But why do you keep saying this? Is this just a wild accusation that is being made by the patriotic front and the PF shooting in the dark and hoping that something will land? Are you doubting that? What I need is clarity because I don't understand. So let, 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 let me break it down for you. In the first place, Mao Sampa holds a meeting on a Sunday with police security. The police, before the event, are informed that it is intended by one Mao Sampa to hold an illegal meeting, which is not sanctioned by the party. What do the police do? They ignore all that. In the middle of the night, at about 20.30, the meeting ends. After the meeting ends, we see letters flying around, purported to have been signed by the Deputy Inspector General of the Police on the 24th itself. A meeting that ended at 23 hours, or rather 20.30, some of them. And Miles purports that they cleared the fingerprints on the 24th itself. It means that after the election, that uh, sham election, they submitted fingerprints to the police between 2030 and midnight and before the very next day those were cleared now if you're going to clear fingerprints with the police for purposes of an institution such as uh, an organization or indeed a club what happens when you present the fingerprints of the new office bearers the police have to vet those names and in vetting those names they have to check if those people have any criminal records to start with secondly they have to check with the previous holders of those positions to say listen you were holding this particular position have you relinquished this position and how did you relinquish this position so that is done by the police to ensure that what they are clearing is indeed legitimate the people that we're holding those positions must be able to confirm that indeed we are no longer office bearers and those that are, have presented their fingerprints are the ones that are the new office bearers. That was never done. Otherwise, the previous office bearers would have confirmed to the police and the police would have told us or would have told the nation to say, indeed, we did inquire, we did vet, and this is exactly what happened. Now, that is happening between 2030 of the 24th of October and 2359, the very day, the Deputy Inspector General of the Police 
signs of a letter clearing the fingerprints that indeed they were presented to him and he, de he did clear. There's no time in the history of this country where it is the deputy service that gets to clear fingerprints. It's always the officer in charge. What we see the very next day, uh, uh, there's, there's purported minutes that are presented to, to the Registrar of Societies, which are not worked on, by the way, but it is purported that they were indeed worked on. On the 25th of uh, October itself, we obtained an injunction and presented it before the Registrar of, Soci of Societies. At the time we presented that uh, uh, particular injunction, around 11, nothing had been processed. Nothing whatsoever had been processed. So we, 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 we had, of course, commenced an action against him, against Mr. Malsampa, over his misconduct, as it were, and got an injunction to the extent that he should not purport to be a member of the Patriotic Front Party because he had been expelled. So we have that. The next thing that happens, we go to the Registrar of Societies to obtain a printout of the, the, the listed uh, members or office bearers what did we do? We, we wrote to them. They gave us uh, a quotation. We paid uh, for, for a search. And after paying for a search, we presented our receipt to them. The only thing that they had to do was give us the names of the office bearers. With the undue influence of Mr. Matambo, the permanent secretary of uh, the, the, the Minister of Home Affairs, Nothing was done. There was an instruction that we should not be given uh, that particular list. What happened thereafter? We went to court and got a subpoena. Based on the subpoena, as well as us having fulfilled all requirements, the Registrar of Societies did give us the printout. As of the 13th of uh, November, the office bearers that were there were not Malsampa's group, there was no change whatsoever. And we got to learn that immediately that was released, Jack Mimbu gets to have a press briefing. And he tries to tell the public that the list that was gotten was not authentic because he failed to translate or interpret his own document from his own ministry and trying to, to give an impression that there had already been a change of office bearers, when in fact not. The very next day, Mwetwa, the spokesperson for the government, holds a briefing. And in his briefing, what is he saying? That Madame Mende had been moved because she had given uh, a list, or indeed uh, the list of office bearers, to a patriotic front party lawyer, acknowledging the authenticity of the letter. Now, that is on the 13th of November. That having happened on the 13th of November, it makes you question a lot of things. When the police had gone to the secretariat to try and secure it for Mao Sampa, under what instruction were they working on? Because there was no court order, firstly. Secondly, the office bearers had not been changed. So, first of all, this is a very tricky uh, situation for Madame Nedi Muti because as we saw previously, she could not act because she claimed she could not act on Mao Sampa because she claimed that the matter was before the court, so she cannot like make any any ruling on Mao Sampa. She cannot declare his his seat as vacant because the matter is in court uh, because she doesn't want you know to to uh, find it to create or cause contempt of court because she might she might make the seat vacant, the material seat vacant for Mao Sampa and the court rules on, on his favor and that will just contradict things so she cannot act, it's beyond her. So the same thing uh, goes for the, for the nine members of parliament that were expelled by Mr. Mao Sampa if she, she cannot declare their seats vacant because the, the, there is an issue going on in court and if she, if she even if she was to do that, you know, it will just contradict 
to what she previously did and of course we know the the law must be consistent so if she was if she's gonna act on those nine members of parliament then that means she's not being consistent with with what she did before and that can cause problems within the within within the parliament that can cause anarchy so this is a very uh, tricky situation right now um and for this whole problem i think the court needs you know to push things as fast as they can but of course we know at the same time they have to take their time to avoid any errors to make sure that everything is well looked looked at because if you look at the whole thing like the way he explained it uh the way my episode explained it if you look at the way the names of registrar were changed you know how things were done for mouse about to become as pf president everything just happened so fast like how do you submit uh, uh, documents around 2030, 20, 20, because is the, the meeting, uh, the, the, the convention ended around 2030. It ended in the night. And it is not just Mike Bizuru that is telling us what time it ended. We've seen even other people that also claim to have been part of that convention. They claimed that it ended around that time. So if you see the time at which these documents were being processed or moved, it was it was already in the night. And we all know that normally uh, all these government workers they don't they don't process documents normally or work on documents after 17 hours zambian time or 5 pm we, we we know that they hardly do this around after that time so i mean this is just too fishy this is just too fishy like i said before like i said in my in my previous videos the 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 upnd did not start this faction even though both sides are, are, are not agreeing with each other that there's a faction in the P within the pf the fact is that there's a faction within the pf and the upnd did not start this faction as 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 uh, they 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 are they, uh, the ecos team has been claiming even though they will claim that there's no faction and they also say that this this, pro this faction was also started by the upnd which is they also contradict the statements there this faction was not started by the upnd like i said in my previous video this faction the upnd are just taking advantage of it if if mao sampa He's just given this uh uh he's given all the the favors that he he needs this faction will not end, end any time soon that is what the upn is doing just give mao sampa all the favors he wants okay because if you see even in the nature in which they 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 they, they, they claim that they changed the office of bearers names first of all when 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 you submit the new names of of the office of bearers that you submit the new names the police while while also checking uh, the records of those new bearers if to check if they have no criminal case they also have to check in with the previous uh, uh, bearers offices names those people they have to check in with those people also to all to make sure that those people have linguished their positions because you cannot have a situation whereby there is a contradiction you find that one or one or two of the former office uh, uh, bearers is still holding on to that position then you, you allow another person to take the same position that somebody already holds that to cause confusion that is why they they have to check in with the previous uh, uh bearers to see if those people have really linguished their positions but it, it is very clear that they never did that okay and it can't just be a coincidence that everything is just you know so of course Mao Sampa is being favored by the government this is this is this is very simple and it's very clear he's been favored by the government the government is just taking advantage of the situation anyway and like i said so uh, let me know what you think about what uh Makebi zulu said in this interview and don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not subscribed to this channel and turn on the notification button so that each time i drop new videos you get notified